Here is another example with another amplifier circuit. Let's look at this amplifier circuit and identify which family does it belong to. So if we look carefully, we'll find that the signal or the voltage that we want to amplify is connected towards the base. The output is taken from the emitter. So this is a common collector. This is a common collector amplifier. And again, it's given IC, the DC value of the current, of the collector current is given, all the resistors are given, VA is 100, beta is 100, this means that we will not ignore RO here, we have to take RO into account, so the first step is, uh, of course, we need to calculate, find V input looking at this point, find V output from this point, find the voltage gain V output over VB, this is VB, and find the current gain between the load current and I base. So we need to find the current gain between I load and I base. So all these uh, parameters, all these quantities we need to find, we need to find the expressions for, okay? So the first step is you need to calculate the parameters, you need to calculate uh, uh, whether GM you are going to use GM uh, VDE or not, so you need to calculate RE or RY, whatever model you are going to use. So let's, let's after you calculate these parameters, let's look at the circuit and we choose which model we are going to use. Uh, what I see here is that T model might be more convenient, okay? It doesn't matter, you can use still use the Pi model, but the T model here uh, might be a little bit convenient and you will get this by experience as you saw in many problems you will get by experience you will get which model to use and after we finish the problem you ask yourself what if we use the other model try to solve the same problem using another uh, the other model and see if you are going to get the same solution or not see how difficult the solution will be it might be of the same difficulty Okay, not necessarily one of them is, is more difficult than the other, it might be of the same difficulty. But as a training for you, try to solve the same problem that we solved, for example, using the T model. Try to solve it using the Pi model and try to reach to the same result. So let's do, let's do the uh, uh, AC uh, model. So again, we start from V signal. You go always start from the input source, then R signal, then we have a capacitor short circuit, then we have a resistance RB towards the ground, and then the transistor comes. We are going to replace the transistor with the T model here. If you want, you can try with the Pi model. I'm going to use the T model. So in the T model, the mains will be connected by a wire, and then the emitter has a resistance RE, and this is now the emitter. Okay, this is the emitter of the transistor. The connector will be connected by A current source alpha IE where IE is the current here in the emitter or you can call the current source GMBBE this is another option you can put both of them alpha E and GMBBE and use whatever is easier for you okay this is the connector but here since we are not ignoring uh, we are not ignoring RO there will be also a resistance RO between the collector and the emitter so there is a resistance between the collector and the emitter RO and then the collector will be connected towards ground because the DC supply here will be deactivated ground so the collector will be ground the emitter, let's look at the emitter now the emitter has a DC current source which will be open circuit so this branch will be open circuit and then we have a capacitor which will be short circuit and then a resistance RL capacitor which will be short circuit and then a resistance, a resistance RL towards the ground and our V output will be this this is our V output so now we plotted now we plotted our circuit but that, as you see we have a problem here we have a little bit of problem this part of the circuit is a problem huh? why? because it looks like the delta delta star when the conversion between delta and the star which is very difficult to solve Right? We have like a, a, a node here where we have two branches and then these two branches are connected at the end by a third branch. So this looks like the delta that maybe you saw in the 
uh, in the uh, circuit scores. Uh, you have three nodes like this connected with delta, delta circuit and you have to convert it to star in order to solve it. So this makes things difficult. However, we notice something that might make it easy. We notice that the resistance RO is connected between this point and the collector which is ground. So this RO is connected between this point and the ground. So why not, why not, we just remove it from here and you connect it between this point and the ground. The ground is the collector, so this can be considered also to be the collector, right? So by moving RO from this branch to here, you make the circuit much easier than before. So by noticing that the RO was connected between this point and the ground, and you connect it or you move it from this ground to this ground, which is the same ground eventually, and now the circuit is very easy to solve. So now, the first thing that we need to calculate is R input looking at the base. We need to calculate R input looking at the base. So let's look at R input from here and try to calculate it. First, remember something. Remember that if this is IE, the current here is alpha IE, and the current of the base, the current of the base will be what? Will be IE over 1 plus beta, right? The relation between the base current and the emitter current is 1 plus beta, IE over 1 plus beta. R input equals what, Yashwag? R input equals RB. If you look from this point, you will see RB parallel with whatever comes next. So let's call whatever comes next, let's call it R in bar. So we can say now, we can say now that R in equals RB parallel with R in bar. Where R in bar is the input resistance looking after RB. So now let's focus on calculating R in bar. How to calculate R in bar? In order to calculate R in bar, we forget everything before. And we need to calculate R in bar. So in order to calculate R in bar, we have a circuit with a dependent source, and we need to calculate the input resistance looking at this point. So what we are going to do is we are going to connect a voltage source Vx that generates current Ix, and we try to get a relation between Vx over Ix. So R input bar will be Vx over Ix. Notice that Ix is the same as I base which is IE over 1 plus beta, right? So IX equals IE over 1 plus beta. What about VX? VX is the voltage between this point and the ground, which is the voltage here plus the voltage here, right? The voltage here is IE multiplied by RE plus the voltage here is IE multiplied by the parallel combination of these two resistors. We have a current IE going down here. We have a current IE going down. This IE will go into the parallel combination of these two resistors together, right? So the voltage across these two resistors together is IE multiplied by the parallel combination, which is IE multiplied by RO parallel with RL. Now, IE is going to cancel, and you will get RM bar to be 1 plus beta multiplied by Re plus Ro parallel with Rl. So it's like the resistance of the emitter Re plus the parallel combination Rl parallel with Ro referred to the base. This is what we talked about many times. Uh, the resistance in the emitter is Re plus this parallel combination Ro parallel with Rl. Referred to the base, you multiply by 1 plus beta. So this is now R input bar. After you get R input bar, you take the parallel combination between R input bar and RB. This will give you R input that we wanted to calculate from the beginning. So R input will be RB parallel with all this. And you can substitute the numbers that you have in order to calculate in order to calculate the value of Rn. Okay? So, uh, if you substitute, you'll find that the value of Rn is 28.3 kilo ohm. But again, again, I remind you, get the expression first and then substitute at the last step. 
Okay? Once we calculated Rn, let's go back to our original circuit. We go back to our original circuit. So let's remove all this. And our original circuit, we have here Rb. And then we had our signal. And this is the signal, the M. Okay? Next, we need to calculate the voltage gain. V out over V base. V base is the voltage here. This is the voltage V base. And V out is the voltage here. So this is V out. This is V base. So we need to calculate now the gain. Voltage gain V out over V base. Of course, if you look carefully, you'll find that V base is between this point, which is the same as this point, and the ground. V out is only from this point to the ground. So V out is part of V base, part of it, right? So we can obtain it by voltage divider. V base is the whole volt, while V out is part of it. Is the volt only about this or around this parallel combination? So it will be a voltage divider. V out over V base is this resistance, whatever here, whatever resistance is here, over the sum. So V out over V base will be the parallel combination of RO parallel to RL divided over the sum of RE plus RO parallel to RL. It's a voltage divider rule. Okay? So this is this is now the voltage gain. This is the voltage gain which you can calculate to be in the range of 0.99. So approximately unity. Approximately unity voltage gain. Why do we have unity voltage gain here in the common collector amplifier? Because if the, if the, if the collector is common, any change in the base happens in the emitter. Why? Because usually the difference between the base and the emitter is constant, which is VBE, usually it's 0.7. So if you change the base up, the emitter will change up. If you change the base down, the emitter will change down so that the voltage difference between them is approximately constant, fixed all the time to 0.7, right? This is the voltage of the emitter base junction, right? It should be always constant, 0.7, so if you increase one of them, the other one follows. That's why we call it voltage follower. We call this amplifier, the common collector amplifiers, they are called voltage follower. Why? Because as you change, the input, the output voltage will change with the same change. The gain between them is approximately one, approximately unity gain. Okay? So, here for common collector, this is a property of the common collector uh, amplifiers, is that the gain between the base voltage and the, uh, uh, the output voltage is usually approximately constant, uh, approximately one, approximately unity. Now let's calculate the current gain. The current gain, which is the gain between I load, the current in the load, and the base current. Here it is required to calculate it between the base current. I might ask you to calculate the current gain between the load current and the signal current, the current here. In this case, you have to calculate first the relation between the load current and the I base, and then you multiply by I base times I signal. So you will do two gains, I output or I load, divided by I base, multiplied by I base, divided by I signal. You can do that, okay? Now we are going to calculate I load over I base. I load equals what? The current in the load. We can get the a relation between the current in the load and I emitter. I emitter, which is here, is going to be divided between these two resistors, right? So I load equals I emitter, and then we use a current divider. I emitter is going to be divided between this and this. So I load will be I emitter multiplied by RO over RO plus RL, current divider rule. Over I base equals what? What is the relation between I base and IE? And I need to get the relation so that I cancel IE from the equation. So I base equals IE over 1 plus beta, right? So here IE will cancel with IE, and the current gain will be 1 plus beta, 1 plus beta multiplied by RO over RO plus RL, which will be in the range of 96.2. So the current gain here is high. 
the current in here between the current of the output which is connected to the emitter and the current of the input which is connected to the base we know that the emitter the current of the emitter is high compared to the base any change small change in the current of the base will give you high change large change in the current of the emitter that's why the current gain is high so the current gain here is in the range of 96.2 finally we need to calculate our output looking at this point looking directly before rl directly before rl we need to calculate our output and now let's go back to our original circuit we are going to draw it in, in a nicer way maybe so here it's just I'm, I'm going to redraw this part so that we don't have so many writings okay so here this is RE we have RO and this is RM we need to calculate our output looking from here this is what we need to do now we need to calculate our output looking from here okay so what we'll do forget everything before this point so you remove our L deactivate any independent source so you are going to deactivate the independent source here E signal you are going to deactivate now when you deactivate this you will get R signal parallel with RB R signal parallel with RB you can combine them together okay maybe you can combine these two resistors R signal with RB and we call them RG for example so you can call them RG where RG let me remove now this circuit we don't need it anymore where RG write it on the side it's R signal parallel with RB and now we need to calculate the output resistance we were used to say that when you deactivate the independent source the current will be zero and the dependent uh, source will be open circuit be careful because this is not always the case for example here the, the dependent source will not be removed why? because there is nothing to guarantee that the current here will be zero actually when you deactivate the, the, the independent source the circuit here is connected, still connected so there is nothing to say that the current here will be zero and hence the dependent source will be zero no, there is nothing to say that so you have to be careful so this is our circuit now and we need to calculate the output resistance looking from here do you agree with me that the output resistance looking from here the first thing that you will see is you will see RO let's, let's move it here a little bit just for convenience you will understand why the first thing that you will see is RO parallel with whatever you will see next parallel with whatever you will see after RO so you, when you look from here for RO what you will see RO parallel with whatever you will see next let's call it R output bar so you will see R O parallel with R output bar I'm trying to simplify it so I'm going to see R O parallel with something parallel with R output bar let's now focus on how to calculate R output bar let's remove R O and let's focus on how to calculate R output bar we have a circuit that looks like this from this point you have R E and then you have here RG with a current here IB is equal to IE over 1 plus beta and then you have a dependent source which is alpha IE where IE, IE is the current going from this node down here IE is the current going from this node down this is IE the direction is very important don't put IE in this direction because R, IE is going down from this node down right so don't put it huh, in this direction no it's in this direction from the node here from the intersection node in this direction and then we need to calculate R output bar I just changed the circuit 
to a nicer plot, nicer diagram. So in order to calculate this, what we are going to do, we are going to connect Vx that has a current Ix, and we will say that R of bar, R of bar equals Vx over Ix. Now, Ix equals what? Ix, the current Ix equals negative Ie. The current Ix going out of, from our source here, we connect this to calculate the thermal equivalent, right? This is what we used to do in the circuits course. Okay, Ix equals negative Ie. What about Vx? Vx will be the drop across this resistor plus the drop across this resistor. So Vx will be the drop across this resistor is the current going down here multiplied by energy. The current going down here is negative Ie over 1 plus beta multiplied by Rg. Plus the drop here is the current going in this direction is the current going in this direction which is negative Ie multiplied by Re. Negative Ie will cancel with negative Ie negative Ie will cancel with negative Ie and you will get that R alpha bar you will get that R alpha bar let me write it here You will get that R alpha bar equals negative. Negative will cancel, so it will be Rg over 1 plus beta minus uh, plus Re. This is R alpha bar, and then you say that R alpha is R O parallel with this, with Rg over 1 plus beta plus R. Of course, if you think about this, you will find that Rg was connected to the base. Rg was the resistance connected to the base, and now we are referring it to the emitter. So it will be referred to the emitter by dividing it over 1 plus beta. We divide it over 1 plus beta. Because the current increases, the resistance must decrease. You divide over 1 plus beta, you add to the resistance Re, and then you take everything in parallel with Ro. You take everything in parallel with R. So this is the expression for our output. Okay. And, and if you calculate this, you will find that it will be approximately 84 ohm. 84 ohm. Small R output, small R output, which is kind of good. So here if we uh, look at the properties of that. Uh, common collector amplifier, you will find that the common collector amplifier, let me show you some properties here. You will find that the common collector amplifier, it has a voltage gain approaching unity. The voltage gain, as we saw, it approaches unity. Why? Because at the input at the base and the output at the emitter, the difference between the base and the emitter is always 0.7. If you change the base, the same change will appear at the emitter, right? The output resistance, we calculated the output resistance, we found it to be small compared to the previous amplifier families, right? Uh, with the input resistance relatively high, the input resistance was relatively high, which makes it an ideal choice to connect a high resistance source to a low resistance load. So if the source has a high input resistance, then this amplifier family is perfect choice. Okay, if the load is, has low output resistance, and the, the load has low resistance, this is a perfect choice. Okay, uh, however, the gain is, the gain is what? The gain is unity, we don't achieve, again, so we have to use it as one stage. That's why we don't use only one stage amplifier. You use multi-stage amplifier, each stage will give you an advantage. Okay, so you can use it to connect with the load or to connect with the source, but after it, you have to connect some other stages, some other amplifier families that give you high voltage gain, okay? The low output resistance makes it a perfect choice for the last stage. So we can use it as a first stage to connect with the source with high input impedance, or the last stage to connect it with a load with low uh, impedance, okay? The current gain is limited by beta. The current gain is high here. Because between the base and the emitter, the current gain is high, as we explained, 
uh, and is limited by beta. It cannot go beyond one plus beta, actually. Okay, but approximately it will be beta because the one is much smaller than beta. That's it for this example and for the common uh, collector. There is, there is in the slides you will find a comparison between the different uh, amplifier families. For example, the common emitter is the only amplifier that gives you negative gain with a phase 180, while the other two families uh, they give you zero, zero uh, phase shift. And then there is a comparison between all the properties, the voltage gain, current gain of each of them with the input resistance, output resistance, and everything in the, uh, in the, uh, this table, okay? Uh, also, here the parameters that we usually use in the digit and the next transistor, this will be explained later when we come to the MOSFET. Okay, see you in the next video with a new topic, inshallah.